I've been really into fountain pens for the past few years now, and I really wanted to try out some of the budget fountain pens that I had missed on my first round of buying fountain pens. I kind of started out with some of the beginner recommended pens and then moved up slightly from there, trying some more expensive ones once I learned that I liked them, but it was my birthday this week and I asked for this Goulet pens order. And so today I'm going to show you what I got in this little haul. And most of it are some less expensive fountain pen options that I am really excited to try out because I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. I also got a replacement nib for one of my more expensive pens that I'd been meaning to get, a medium for my Monteverde Invincia, and then I picked out three sample inks that I am going to try out and test in this video. But if you would like to see like a more in-depth review once I've had a chance to try these pens and use them for a considerable amount of time, let me know in the comments below. I have a lot of pens right now that I could potentially be reviewing and I honestly don't really know where to start, so if you're excited about a particular one, definitely let me know. So we're gonna start off with the pen that I have seen recommended to beginner fountain pen users more than any other pen. Everyone seems to say that this is the best value for under $20. It is the Pilot Metropolitan. And I guess I didn't initially include it in fountain pens that I wanted to buy when I first started just because it isn't as much my style as the other ones that I had tried, but especially now that I have a YouTube channel and I am so excited to talk to all of you folks about fountain pens, I felt like I need to try it just to find out what all the fuss is about, like I said. I got the gold one, and this is a metal pen, first of all. Normally you have to spend more than $20 for a metal fountain pen. A lot of the lower budget ones tend to be plastic, and this one has a bit of a weight to it, it's not super heavy, but it definitely feels more premium than a lot of the pens in this price range. It comes with a cartridge, and at least the Pilot fountain pens that I have use proprietary Pilot cartridges, so you can't use standard international ones with it. You can get converters for them, and this pen actually does come with a converter, which I'll show you in a little bit. Also a re another reason why it's a really good value for the price and it fits really nicely in my hand. I have smaller hands and it's not too big and not too heavy and it just feels nice. Uh, this is the medium nib. It is a Japanese medium so it is finer than maybe what you would find on a Lamy Safari or a Twisby. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up, take a look at that converter, and it is my first experience with a squeeze converter. It seems like it's really easy to operate, and I do have a Pilot Con 40, which is a twist piston type converter. That That's the type that I'm more used to using, but I'm definitely gonna try this out and see how I like it, because I'm not super into the Pilot Con 40. Here I'm going to put it side by side with a much more expensive pen. It's four times the cost. This is the Kaweco All Sport and it is my favorite fountain pen that I own. It's in the gold finish and you can see that the color is pretty similar to this Pilot Metropolitan, but the finish is a little bit more satiny and smooth on the Kaweco All Sport than it is on the Pilot Metropolitan. I do have a few other Kaweco All Sports, but none of them are really quite as smooth as this one. Some of them have kind of a more gritty texture, and the Pilot Metropolitan is not gritty at all. It's kind of just a nice matte finish, and it has that one little bit over on the right side before the grip section that is smoother and more glossy than the rest of the pen. So you can kind of take a look at that here. But just in general, I'm very impressed with the quality of this pen especially compared to one that is considerably more expensive. So if you're just starting out and you like the look of a metal pen with a nice metallic finish, this might be a really good option for you. I've also heard very good things about the way that it writes. It's very consistent according to pretty much every review that I have read. And now we're gonna move on to one that I don't see recommended as often, and that is the Diplomat Magnum. I have one other Diplomat pen that is a bit more expensive than this one, but I was really interested, just because I love the way that one writes, in seeing 
what their entry-level pen looks like. And Goulet Pens has an exclusive, the Prismatic Purple, which I thought looked really cool. <laughs> and it again comes with a converter, which is kind of amazing because my Lamy Safari didn't come with a converter and that one's more expensive than this. And so here's what this pen looks like. It has a very shiny clip and the Prismatic Purple is kind of a subtle, dark purple that changes color depending on the lighting that you're looking at it. Here it is next to the Pilot Metropolitan, and honestly, I am not as impressed with this at first glance as I was with the Pilot Metropolitan. It is very, very lightweight, which might make it good for long writing sessions because it's not like heavy on your hand, but it's plastic and it doesn't feel as premium as the Metropolitan. However, I have not actually inked up either of these pens yet, and I am really excited to do that once I have used up some of the other pens that are currently full, because the other Diplomat pen that I have actually has a really bouncy nib, especially considering that it's a steel nib, so I find the writing experience with that pen to be really unique, and so I'm excited to see what this one is like, especially since it is considerably less expensive and would make it, you know, more accessible to more people. I went ahead and popped out the empty cartridge that was in here and installed the converter instead because that's my preference, but you can refill the cartridge as well. So for a you know $23 pen, they give you two different options for how to use bottled ink and also include this extra full cartridge. So now I'm going to compare that with my other Diplomat pen, which is the Diplomat Traveler. And it's called that because it's very thin and easy to travel with and it has a really good snap to the cap. So it's less likely to leak ink everywhere in your bag if you take it someplace. The newer one, the Diplomat Magnum, does still have a pretty good snap to the cap, but it doesn't feel as substantial or high quality. I honestly am not super into the feel of the plastic on this pen, but I'm hoping that the writing experience will make up for that. But the Traveler is more than double the cost, so that makes sense. The nibs do look a little bit different, and I'm not sure if it's just a design difference. The Magnum is more of a satin finish, while the Traveler has a very glossy one. And you can see here that the Magnum has a faceted grip section, whereas the Traveler has a completely round one. Also, I got a medium nib for this as well. Medium is my favorite, but the medium on my Diplomat Traveler is actually a very juicy one. It's one of the more broad mediums that I own. It's more similar to my Lamy Safari medium. And posting the cap on the back of this pen makes it feel more substantial because the cap is pretty heavy compared to the rest of the pen body. But I am not gonna write it off just yet because I have yet to try it out and see how it writes. That's the most important thing, honestly. This one is the least expensive of the bunch, and honestly, it is very surprising to me because it is heavy. It is a clunker of a pen. Oh, it has a sticker on it, which we're gonna figure that out in a little bit, but this is the Jin Hao X450, and I had heard good things about this brand, especially considering how budget-friendly they are. This is less than $10, which is pretty rare. For a fountain pen so hopefully it will turn out to be a good purchase i really did struggle with this sticker <laughs> for a good long while before i took to the sink and tried other materials to try and get it off of there first i tried just warm water which helped with most of the sticker and then i was a little bit risky and i went for the alcohol and honestly i was worried that i was going to ruin the finish but for under ten dollars i would rather get that gunk off of there so <laughs> Here it is, all clean, with no sticker gunk. Also, can we just go ahead and appreciate what this nib looks like? I, it's a two-toned steel nib. It says it's 18 karat gold plated. It has this kind of funky grip situation, which we'll see if I like that. For $10, I can deal. And when you go ahead and take the body of the pen off, you can see that there is also a included converter, which always gets you points from me. I also love that this pen has gold accents instead of silver, which I tend to like more on more neutral colored pens. 
And just to give you, look look how much bigger this pen is than the Pilot Metropolitan. I am interested to see what it feels like when you're writing with it. And you can also see that the nib is much larger as well. Look at that. Just looking at these three pens side by side can really show you the variety that you can get even in this lower price range of fountain pens. And that just goes to show you that there's something out there for you that makes sense for you, that fits your style, even if you don't spend a whole bunch of money. I am planning to take my time testing these out, using them, writing with them a ton, so that I can compare them to the other budget-friendly fountain pens that I own and kind of put a video together comparing and contrasting them all to help you have more resources to figure out what is the best pen in this price range for you. So here they are next to the Twisby Eco T and the Lamy Safari and also the Pilot Kakuno and the Plastic Kaveco Sport. And these were the first four fountain pens that I ever purchased. And so <laughs> I thought that I would round out my little collection of budget-friendly fountain pens. If there are any that you think I've missed that you would like me to include in that roundup when I do get that all together, let me know in the comments below. And now on to the rest of my birthday haul. This was a last minute addition to the cart because I got some extra money in the mail from my mom. And so I thought, you know what? I've been really wanting this. It is the Traveler's Company Brass Fountain Pen and it is absolutely beautiful. It is a mini pen, which I can't resist. I love a good pocket pen. It is brass and it's going to patina. It is very, very shiny right now. <laughs> This pen takes standard international short cartridges, which I have a whole bunch of because of my Kaveco Sports. That's what I like to use with those. And it comes with one, I assume black, maybe blue. And I love this pen already. <laughs> I also thought that the packaging was really nice, which is not surprising because it's Traveler's Company, but here it is. You can see it has a little hole in the top so you can add it onto like a necklace or something, put it on a cord, carry it around your neck. And this is what it looks like size-wise next to the Kaveco All Sport. You can also see that it is more of a cool toned metal, whereas the Kaveco Sport is a warmer tone. On the side, it says Traveler's Company, made in Japan. When you're ready to use it, you just pull to open it, which is quicker than a screw cap, so that's good. And you can see here that the pen body itself is probably too small to use without posting the cap, but when you post the cap, it actually becomes a really substantial sized pen. Like, that is a longer pen than most of my fountain pens. When posted, it is longer than the Kaveco Sport, but it is also thinner. This is how the pen body unscrews from the grip section so that you can put a cartridge in there. Pretty simple. And they only give you one nib option with this pen and it's a fine nib. I'm going to give it a try, but if it's too fine for me, I actually saw a video by Mystery Arts here on YouTube where they figured out that you can swap out the Schmidt FH241 nibs, which JetPen sells, and that they're the same size. Speaking of swapping out nibs, I have a Monteverde Invincia with an extra fine nib on it and it turned out to just be too fine for me. So I ordered a replacement nib as part of my birthday haul and it's a medium. So I am going to swap that out here just to show you how it works. You grab hold of the existing nib and then twist the pen while you're holding onto the nib and it unscrews. It was pretty easy to do. I did look it up first on Goulet Pen's YouTube channel and they have so many good resources there just to make sure because I didn't want to break it by accident. But just went ahead, screwed the new one right back in there, and now I have made a change that will probably make that pen a lot better for me. And because I cannot resist trying new ink samples every time I order pens, I picked up Diamine Lilac Night, Colorverse Brunch Date, and Robert Oster Cherry Blossom, and I'm going to swatch them in my swatch book. This is a Chic Sparrow Emma Traveler's Notebook in the pocket size with some Jet Pens Tomoe River Paper Books in it, and I did make a video about this journal recently here on my channel if you'd like to see that. So just my kind of first impressions of the Robert Oster Cherry Blossom. I am very picky about pinks and reds. They're not my favorite. And honestly, I think I really like this one. 
It has really beautiful shading on it. I love the way that there are darks and lights and the little dark line that you get between them is so nice and just, yeah, I can see myself using this one. And the reason why I picked it is because I have so many like blues and greens and purples and just I knew that I wanted to at least get a couple of reds and pinks and this one jumped out at me as something that I might like. I think it's really beautiful and I've had really good luck with Robert Oster inks in the past so I figured it was worth a try. I also have even more trouble with the color orange and this one kind of jumped out at me as something a bit more unique. It's the Colorverse Brunch Date and I would kind of describe it as kind of a coppery brownish orange. It's a really interesting more neutral kind of warm color and I figured it was worth a try. <laughs> it reminds me a little of like a peach and it has some nice shading to it and I'm definitely gonna have to actually ink it up in a fountain pen. Uh, the dip pen only really <laughs> tells me so much, but I am interested to see how it writes when I'm using it for longer periods of time, filling up a whole page with it, and I am willing to give it a chance. I'm also very curious about Colorverse inks in general. They seem to have a lot of really interesting, unique colors that not everybody has, so maybe this will be first of many. We'll find out, I guess. And then this last ink is the Diamine Lilac Night. It's a very dark, kind of bluish purple, and I have a lot of Diamine inks, and I've been trying to try as many of the 150th anniversary ones as I can, since those are limited. And this is one that I had had my eye on, but honestly, I think it might turn out to be a little bit too dark. I know that maybe if I use it in a fountain pen that has a finer nib, I might like it a little bit more on that. This uh, glass dip pen is a little bit unpredictable when it comes to the line width that you get from it. Depends on how much ink is on there and which way I have it turned and all of that stuff. But uh, I think this is pretty. I do have a lot of dark purple inks, so it'll be interesting to see which one I reach for the next time I want to use a purple ink. And that is all of the things. I hope you enjoyed seeing me to get kind of a first look at all of these products. I know that once I have more time with them, I can give you a little bit clearer of a picture of my thoughts on them. But for now, I'm excited to read your comments and see which products you're looking forward to seeing a more in-depth look at. I, like I mentioned, have quite a lot of fountain pens and I would love to eventually review all of them here on this channel. If you haven't already, definitely take a look at my fountain pen collection video because that's kind of what I'm working with. And uh, I am super pumped for the pens that I'm currently using to run out of ink so I can pick some new ones and fill those up with something different. It happens to me all the time. Honestly, it's kind of why I'm glad that a lot of my pens don't have a really huge ink capacity because the more often they run out of ink, the more times I can switch to a different pen and a different ink and try new things. And it's just really fun. It's kind of a little adventure for me. And I'm so glad to have a place where I can share that with all of you. If you are on other social media platforms, you can find me there at Lauren Fair WX. I'd love to keep in touch with you outside of the videos. I post all kinds of fun photos of my journals and pens and yeah, hope you're having a really good day and I will see you next time.